Hi, I'm Sophie Dahl, and I'm going to read you an extract from my new book, Madame Badubada. Part one, the new old guest. My name is Mabel. I live somewhere curious. It's called the Mermaid Hotel. My dad is the manager, but my mum is the boss. Our back door leads to the sea, along a path of old men trees, battered and bent by the wind and salt. Rock time twines with thistles that spike your feet if you're barefoot, but I don't care because I'm an adventurer and adventurers are often shoeless. As well as bare feet, adventurers are keen on Swiss cheese, the number eight, donkeys and Yorkshire puddings. I call them orchard puddings. Adventurers don't like being told what to do, spiders, ham and plimsolls because they smell like cardboard boxes. Mine are too tight. They sit at school in a box with all the other cardboardy plimsolls for company. I'm an only child. I can cross my eyes. And sometimes when I write, I get my D's and B's modelled up. My teacher, Mrs. Banks says, Mabel, your D is dancing to the beat of a B. And then she laughs, bad joke. I prefer home. No plimsolls, more bare feet and adventure. Lots of lovely adventure. Although the Mermaid Hotel is called a hotel, really it's a bed and breakfast. This means you get a bed and breakfast, but you have to make your own lunch and tea. The hotel has bothersome seagulls that shriek on the sills and a mermaid over the front door, who I call Beryl in Peril, because she's far from the sea, waving. And inside little packets of marmalade and butter that I hide in my pocket because they make a good snack. But most importantly, the Mermaid Hotel has guests, strangers that come and go. Some are delightful, some are like Han. I am not a guest. I am a resident. I'm going to tell you the story of our most interesting guest. I was sitting under the front desk, minding my own business, when the bell rang. Ring! I peered up. She was old, 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 with red lips. She was not alone. She had... Two dogs, two cats, a tortoise and 23 bags all clustered around her like a choir. I thought she might be a little bit awful. Darling, she growled, please remove yourself from under the desk and pass me my bag. The blue one there to the right of that terrifically ugly coat stand. No, you frightful little child, not that one. Blue, I said. I passed her the bag. It felt like it had 10 gold bars in it. I might have given her an icy glare. No one had ever called me such names before, and I'm keen on that coat stand. The awful stranger didn't say thank you. She trailed the smell of old roses, spice and vanilla. Her hair was red and crunchy, a toffee apple without the stickiness. She wore a cloud of feathers around her neck. Her head poked out of them, like a cross ostrich pecking for grubs. That was when I named her Madame Badubada, rhymes with Ulala, a good name for this growly voiced, suitcase heavy, feather clad guest villain that I was 110% sure she was. Mm-hmm.